The Exorcist by William P. Blatty Dramatized by Robert Forrest Part 1 We can talk in here, Lieutenant. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, Carl will be here in a minute. Would you like a drink? Uh, thank you, Mrs. McNeil, but no. Not even coffee this time. I, I kept you too long last time. Far too long. Your daughter? Reagan. Reagan. <clears throat> she's still not well. I can tell. It's in your eyes. Uh, forgive me. You haven't been sleeping. Not much. Uh, Lieutenant, if this is more about the night Burke died, I really don't know what else we can tell you. Burke Dennings. A wonderful director. As English as David Lean and as sly as Orson Welles. Was he as difficult as both? Burke was a dream to work with. He was gentle and patient and uh, told schoolboy jokes. But off stage, off the set, relaxing, refreshed. Yes, when he was drinking, he could be difficult. In fact, well, he could be mean. It's gossip. It's intrusive. Who can resist gossip? Not a lieutenant in the homicide division. But there's something different. Different how? How indeed. I got it. The clock. That beautiful clock on the wall. It stopped. It does that. It needs rewinding. No, I don't think so. You have to call in an expert. It's temperamental. You wish to see me, ma'am? Uh, uh, yes, Carl. The lieutenant has a few more questions for you. Details only, Mr. Ransom. I'm happy to provide them, sir. The night Mr. Dennings died, you were at the movies. Poor Schofield in King Lear. It was excellent. Well, Schofield is excellent. But the film, I... <laughs> Never mind. Now, it's to do with time. With the times of your journey home. As exact as you remember. Carl's times are always exact. I saw the six o'clock showing at the crest. The film lasts just over two hours. I am not sure about the minutes. I took a bus then from the front of the theater to Wisconsin Avenue. Uh, 9.20 perhaps. I walked from there to here. I arrived at 9.30 exactly. I remember. I glanced at my watch. Admirable. Impressive. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, that is all. That's all, Mr. Ransom. Thank you, Carl. Right. Every detail fits, like carpentry, like a well-constructed screenplay. At the time of Mr. Denning's death, you were in the consultation with your doctor, the results of tests for your daughter, your secretary was at the pharmacy, medication for the same patient, your servant Carl was at the movies, his wife, your housekeeper, saw a movie that night, too. Which one of us did you have doubts about? Ah, now, Mrs. McNeil, doubt, as you say, it's the job. Sometimes, when I don't feel doubt, I have to act doubtful. Burke was here. He was supposed to look after the place until one or other of us got back. For some reason, he left. He may well have forgotten why he was here in the first place. He was drunk. He fell down the steps out there, all the way down to M Street. Isn't that what happened? Well, he was not robbed. Those steps are very steep. It's a long, long way to the bottom. But the nature of the injuries, the, the, the severity... Please, Lieutenant, not too much detail. Oh. It's all right, it's all right, really, it is. It was heavy, Mrs. McNeil. Oh, yes, a cabinet, I think that's what it was, it must have been. Call them Billy, they're, they're moving some furniture around. Accidents happen. The home is the most dangerous place in the world for accidents. Ah, yes. <laughs> Temperamental. It does that. Well, I trouble you and yours no more. Your daughter, I wish her well. Thank you. You're keeping her out of drafts like I advised. Of course. And you have the best of doctors. Well, I hope they're the best. They're certainly numerous. But we may have to try another... Something new. Someone new. <laughs> I am not fit, Father. 
I am unfit for the work. I'm a priest and a psychiatrist, but I should not be a counselor to these young men. Damien, you're the most popular counselor the university's ever had. Yesterday, one came to me with the old question about loving his neighbor. Some of his neighbors are junky hustlers who would kill for a pair of shoes, let alone a fix. It is an old question, and you know the answer. God does not ask of us what is psychologically impossible. The love God demands is not an emotion, it is an act of will. We must act with love. Yes, Father President, I've been trained to know the answers and in how to give them. It's not like you to sound the cynical note, Damien. I'm sorry, but I want to transfer. A teaching post, psychiatry in New York if possible, then I'd be closer to my mother. I can't decide that alone. I'll have to talk to the bishop, and, and he thinks very highly of your work. Here. Please tell the bishop that I know, I know it as surely as I felt my vocation when I was 18. I should not be a counselor. And if God, or the bishop, demands that act of love from you... Father, when they come to me about sex or loneliness, all that I can deal with. But when they come to me with questions of faith, I am not the one to help them. I'm not fit. I can't even meet their eye. Father, Father, can you help an old golf boy? Enough for train fare and, and maybe a cup of coffee? I have about a dollar fifty on me. I need it for train fare too. You could spare a few cents. Charity, Father. Compassion. I'm a Catholic. I swear I am. I'm truly sorry. What, what are you saying? You got nothing but prayers for me? That all you can offer? Our father, who art in poverty? Ah, oh, look at you. Staring straight ahead. Hey, I'm over here. I'm right here, father. Dying of it all. <laughs> and a dying man needs a drink. Well, help an old doctor, boy. Who would have thought you'd turn out a priest? The kind of boy you were? Mama, we need to stop talking about the past. We need to talk about now, the future. Hey, good stories in the past. Even when I was out selling plastic flowers and clothes packs, there was always good stories. Even when you were out breaking windows, breaking heads. Why do you do this to me? I used to say, why do you do this to me? You remember I used to say that? Still, you straightened out. That's right, I studied. And there was all that exercising and running and boxing. Oh, Jesus, save us. The hoodlums that hung out in that gym. Listen, before I forget, uh, here's a 20. I'll put it here in your purse. Keep your eye on the soup. Don't let it boil. You just gotta gently warm it through. No boiling. Mrs. Corelli, two flights down. She's gone. What about her 18 cats? I was sure I could still smell them. Why do you do this to me, Dimmy? <laughs> I must have said that a million How's times. How's your nurse been in this week? And then that plaque thing appears on your wall. What plaque? You don't remember? It was just there one morning on your bedroom wall. <laughs> What's he stealing now, I thought. Why would I steal a plaque? What was it? Big red cross in the middle, writing top and bottom. My brother is in pain. I share his pain. Dear God. I meet God in him. I got that right? I haven't thought about that for years. See? Good stuff in the past. <laughs> and now here I am, Mary Callis. My boy Dimmy is a priest. <laughs> I'm a doctor, too. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of a doctor. But an all-the-way priest. And still you manage to burn the soup. Just keep moving, creeper. I'll call a cop. Miss McNeil, I'm Father Karras. Oh, Jesus, so you are... I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I should have warned you I wouldn't be in uniform. But you seem to want this meeting to be... Uh... Inconspicuous, yes. It... Can we walk a little? Sure. You're wondering why I asked to meet with you. 
You in particular, I mean, not just any priest. Yes, I'm wondering that. I got your name from Father Dyer. He's a friend of yours, right? Joe is an excellent friend. He was at a party of mine. I know. He told me you'd virtually promised to make him a star. Joe's idea of heaven is a black and white Fred and Ginger nightclub. He's on piano and the angels adore him. Did he tell you about my daughter? No. He didn't tell you what she did? He didn't mention her. I didn't know you had a daughter. There was a, an astronaut there. Reagan told him he was never going to make it back from the moon. He was going to die up there. Then she peed on the sitting room floor. Let's sit down. You mind if I smoke? No, not at all. I'm a smoker myself. Here, let me. That's, uh, it's quite a breeze. You're kind. There's no breeze. I, uh, I asked your friend about you because I'd already seen you, noticed you on the campus. You were talking to a younger priest, your hand on his shoulder. I'm a counselor. I really, I really noticed you. You looked compassionate, human. <laughs> I'm certainly human. And I know you're a psychiatrist. How does a psychiatrist get to be a priest? It was the other way around. The society, the Jesuits, they sent me through medical school training. Where? Harvard, Johns Hopkins, Bellevue. The best? We don't take a vow of intellectual poverty. And how do you go about getting an exorcism? If someone is possessed by the devil or some kind of demon, if that person needs an exorcist, you know? Yes, I know. And first of all, you'd need a time machine. You'd have to go back to the 15th century. What do you mean? It doesn't happen anymore, Miss McNeil. Not since we learned to understand mental illness, paranoia, hysteria. All the things they taught me at Harvard. Since the day I joined the Jesuits, I've never met a priest, not one, who's performed an exorcism. It's my daughter. She's 12. She needs an exorcist. She needs psychiatric care, Miss McNeil. The best clinic and the best doctors you can find. Don't give me that. Don't give me more of that bullshit. I'm up to here with it. Sick of it. I've been to every goddamn doctor in America, every goddamn psychiatrist. It was one of your head shrink buddies who sent me to you, and now you send me back to them? No. No more. And my daughter, Karis. It's my 12-year-old daughter, and she needs your help. I need it. Miss McNeil, I... Please. Help us. If you can tell me about the onset of the illness... There's something I want you to hear and see. Sharon? Well, I suppose the first really weird thing was the Ouija board. She'd always play with it on her own, asking Mr. Howdy questions. Mr. Who? Mr. Howdy. Her imaginary playmate, or so we thought. Another thing that puzzled me was the math. I mean, she'd never been great at it, but now she was just hopeless. As well as being my secretary, Sharon's a tutor for Regan. Oh, that's way too good a word. I help her keep up. You know, we move around a lot. Sometimes Regan has to miss school, and of course her father's never around. We're separated. Divorce on the way. Hallelujah. They're free at last. But I'm afraid I'll have to keep the name. The business. It's still Mrs. McNeil. I think the doctor said the bad math was to be expected with her condition. That right, Chris? Lack of concentration was a symptom. Yeah, right. A symptom of her condition, her syndrome. Trouble was, they named a dozen syndromes. None of them explained it all. Then there was sullenness, tantrums, downright rages sometimes. Some pretty hefty adult language. But the thing is, Father, it, it's difficult now to say just when it all started. Things that at the time seemed, well, not normal exactly, but... Like, uh, I heard noises one night, kind of uh, scratching in the walls in the ceiling. I thought it might be rats. Oh, I hate rats. We don't have rats, Sharon. When I went into Reagan's room, I felt freezing cold. I checked the window, shut tight. I touched her face, her hands, the warm and cozy. Reagan was warm, but you felt cold. So it was my imagination, the neurotic mother? No, 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 I don't mean that. Father, the things we've told you so far, they're really mild. Look, that's Reagan, six months ago. She's lovely. Yeah, well, keep looking while you listen to this. It's a recording she made for her father around the, the same time. 
Hi, Dad. We're in Washington now, and it's a really old place, you know, <laughs> history. All these monuments and wide avenues and pillars and, and stuff. And, uh, and, ah, this is really, really weird. Um, I'm all dried up. Tell them what you've been doing, the places you've been. Well, we went into this graveyard, and it's as big as a city. Better stuff than that, Reagan. Oh, yeah. I've been on a horse. You have this huge, huge, gray, beautiful horse. The man lifted me up and put me in the saddle. I was so high. It was so amazing and high. It was like I was flying. Can I have a horse, Dad? Mom says maybe next year. What do you, th what do you think about that? Six months ago. Jesus. My boyfriend works at a stable. He was training the horse. Now come upstairs. Meet her as she is now. It is quiet now, madam. Good. Carl, this is Father Karras. Father Carl Engstrom, my right-hand man. Hello, Carl. How do you do, Father? It is quiet now, but before, it did not want the straps. I know. You can go downstairs now. It demanded I move the straps over and over. You're a wonderful, patient man. May I say something, madam? Of course. You are... Going in there, Father? Well, yes, I'd like to meet Rado. It says terrible things. It calls me a Nazi. A murdering Nazi. I am Swiss, and I had family in Poland. The Nazis killed them. It tells terrible lies. All right, Carl. I'm so sorry. Go downstairs now. Uh, thank you, madam. Who tells terrible lies? Reagan. He calls your daughter it. Not really. You'll go in alone. That might be best. All right. I'll wait downstairs. I'll have a drink ready for you. Bourbon, okay? Hello, Reagan. Hello. How are you? My name is Damien. Damien Karras. It's a funny name. <laughs> I suppose it is. I'm a friend of your mother. She says you haven't been well. And maybe I can help. I hope so. I feel miserable. Can you tell me what's wrong? Well, my nose is really itchy and I can't scratch it. Could you loosen these straps? I don't think I can do that. Oh, yeah, you can. It's easy. I talk better with my hands. I've been in Italy a lot. Rome. I like to make gestures, you know. Gesticulate. That's, uh, that's a fine word. Oh, I know tons. Oodles. But I think maybe you'd hurt yourself. There are marks in your face already. I could, I could scratch your nose for you. Don't you dare touch me. All right. I could promise not to hurt myself. I could promise not to hurt you either. And do you always keep your promises? Oh, you got me there. Sly Damien. No, I tell lies all the time. <laughs> so I shouldn't believe a word you say. You can believe this. I'm not Reagan. Then who are you? I'm the devil. Well, if you're the devil, can you not just make the straps disappear? I said I'm the devil, and that's some cheap magician. You know... Something's always puzzled me. Spirits, ghosts, they always announce themselves with silly tricks. A closet door opens by itself. A chair is discovered in the wrong room. Why not something more spectacular? Undeniable. Here's a puzzle for you. When Jesus came back from the dead, why didn't he walk into the temple and scare the shit out of the high priest? Or visit Pilate? Can you see his face? <laughs> What's he going to do? Crucify Jesus all over again? But no, Jesus just turns up in secret to a few of his numbskull disciples. You call that spectacular? That's an interesting puzzle. For a 12-year-old kid. I could read your mind. Would that convince you? When I told that Nazi Angstrom about his club-footed daughter, he believed me. I saw his faith rise like vomit. Where were we? Oh, 
Yeah. Think of a number between one and infinity. No, that wouldn't mean much. I've seen cheap mind-reading acts, too. Tell me this. If you're not Reagan, where is she? In here. In where? In the piglet. Oh, is that all you want? Fine. You only had to ask, darling. It is a rather succulent suckling, and I do understand temptation. Just loosen the straps, and I'll up with the nightdress, spread the gams, and you can have a bit of stinky finger, or go the whole hog if you like, rut right to your boorish heart's delight as long as you let me watch. I won't tell the sow. Promise. Who is the sow? You know damn well, the Hollywood whore, the one downstairs with the tumbler of bourbon in her shaky hands. Now come on, the straps. But if I undo the straps, that would be an act of charity. Would the devil want me to commit an act of... Feeble! Char- enough! This isn't a Sunday school debating club. Undo the straps! Undo them! Or I'll bring the whole damn house down on all your feeble heads. I'll bring the temple down. Now do it or I bring the fucking house down! <laughs> oh my. Oh my, oh my, oh my. You have the face of a choir boy who's been felt up by the Pope. We don't have much to fear from you, do we, my little morsel? When Jesus spoke about the destruction of the temple... Jesus! Jesus. For Christ's sake, Karis, enough already about that Jew boy faggot. The man was a charlatan as well as a pansy. What's this? The adolescent thrill of blasphemy? (laughs) Did you do that? Did you? Sorry, what did you say, Daniel, dear? The closet door. Did you make it open? I may have done. My mind wanders. I get weary. It does take it out of a poor demon, this possession business. So now you're only a demon, not the devil himself. We're changeable. We're legion. We are many. See, the devil can quote scripture when it suits his purpose. Isn't that Shakespeare? What's this? There are as many devils here as slates on the roof. It's familiar. Here. Let me wipe your mouth. <coughs> oh. There. Just like we spat on your master. Oh, don't wipe it off. You should wear it with pride. A big, slimy badge of honor. For a priest. <laughs> Oh, I know what you are, papist, mumbo-jumbo hypocrite. I can smell it on you. Incense and guilt and piss in your pants. We've nothing to fear from you. Her facility with language, uh, the precocity, it's extraordinary. Was it sexual? Not just that. Biblical allusion, Shakespeare, and Martin Luther, I think. And the extent of her vocabulary, well beyond a 12-year-old. Prodigious. But yes, obscenity, blasphemy. Last week, I found her. I'm not sure I can tell you this. I need to know as much as I can. I found her masturbating. Uh Uh-huh. This is really shocking, Father. I'm a priest and a psychiatrist. She was using a crucifix. (laughs) Now I know what a Harvard and Bellevue priest looks like when he's had a shock. Have another drink? No, thanks. The thing is, we don't even know where she got it. No one in the house is Catholic. Sharon and Billy and Carl all swore they'd never seen it before. I need to know the history, the medical history, who she's seen and what the diagnosis was. Oh, excuse me, madam. Oh, it's okay, Billy. This is Father Karras. He's here to meet Reagan. Hello, Father. This is Billy, my housekeeper. Hello. Are the vegetables are delivered? May I put them away? Prepare some for tonight? Yeah, sure. Carry on. I'll get you the medical records. All right, that won't be easy. I'm a movie star, Father. Right. What tranquilizers have been tried? She's on Librium. What dosage? 400 milligrams. 400? In a day? One dose. It was the only way we could get the straps on her. Even then, it took three of us. Is she eating? 
It's estrogen mainly, through a feeding tube. She was in a clinic in Dayton for a month. They taught us how to use it and give injections. So, what about exorcism? Miss McNeil. Sorry, Mrs. McNeil. I can't try that without church permission, and they have very strict rules. There's a whole list of conditions that have to be met for true possession to be acknowledged. Like what? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, speaking in a language she has no knowledge of, knowing things she couldn't possibly, I really have no idea. I'd have to look it all up. Father, if you bought me Reagan's identical twin, or a, a fairy changeling, same face, same voice, same smell, I'd know it wasn't my daughter. That, that thing up there is not my daughter. She said something strange to me uh, about Carl. He warned you about the lies. Did she mention Berg Dennings? Dennings? Uh, what, the director? He was killed recently, was he not? An accident. Those long steps just at the side of this house. He was drunk and he fell. And Reagan's talked about him before. She didn't mention him to me. Well, she had a kind of obsession about Berg. Thought he was more than my director, more than a friend. Where she got that idea, I do not know, but she had this weird resentment. Anyway, it doesn't matter. She said something about Carl's daughter. His daughter? Carl doesn't... Father, Billy here is Carl's wife. You don't have a daughter, do you, Billy? We had one. I didn't know that. We never mentioned her. She died long ago. I'm so sorry. It was long ago. Mrs. Angstrom, did you ever, or do you think your husband might talk to Reagan about your daughter? We never mentioned her. Forgive me. May I ask one more thing? Yes. Did your daughter have a club foot? Club foot? Was she born with a deformed foot, uh, twisted in some way? It's called talipase, I think. No, Father, she was born fine. Thank you. I'm sorry to ask. She had the polio when she was three. After that, the muscles in her left leg, they're weak. But uh, I never tell this to the child. For weeks, I tell nothing to that child. I'm not allowed. Come on, Villa. You know Carl would rather you don't go up there. Would rather I don't is not it. I'm not allowed. He thinks it would be too upsetting for you. I don't mind upset. I want to help. You do help Villa a lot. And... Oh, forgive me, madam, please, but... Upstairs is your daughter. Maybe changed. Maybe ill, damaged, but not a thing. She is yours. I'm sorry, Villa. She was a sweet child, Father. I wish you could have met her. Yes, yeah, she was quite something. The mother, too. The Hollywood Pixies, they called them. <sighs> another drink, Father. No, thank you, Dr. Clark. Hey, Mickey, another scotch here. Just the one, but make it large. Huh? Did you see that? The uh, Pixie magazine cover? I don't think I did. Mother and daughter together. Glossy and grinning. The Hollywood pixies. Same hairstyle, same toothy grins. Even the same freckles. <laughs> in real life, father. In my real life. Do you know what she called her mother? You ball-breaking, shit-faced Babylonian bitch. Babylonian? You're rich. Huh? Nice alliteration. And not Tourette syndrome. Of course not. It's too considered. It's performed. And Mrs. McNeil didn't tell you about that performance? No. Thanks, Mickey. Yeah, two more for the road. I'm out of here. This time, I, I promise. Did, did she tell you when I first examined her daughter, she said, just keep your goddamn fingers away from my cunt? She was ill. She was a very sick girl indeed. And you have my records to prove it, huh? How do you manage that? The church in Hollywood working in mysterious ways? The church wasn't involved. I had a look at the EEG graph. Yeah, which was uh, regular. That's right. You were looking for a lesion or a tumor, <laughs> some kind of brain damage, but you found nothing. No fluctuation in the graph at all. Isn't that strange in itself? <laughs> the whole case was beyond strange. The girl was already severely disordered when you ran these tests. No sign of brain malformation or injury. So... Her symptoms had to be some form of hysteria. Or heavy drugs. You know, that was my guess. Those two are Hollywood to the bone. But no trace of drugs. So, mental illness, hysteria. 
it's been found, Dr. Klein, that hysteria, severe hysteria, does show some fluctuation in an EEG graph. Minuscule, odd, but definitely there. Yet every test you ran shows nothing. I've looked very closely. <laughs> You're looking too closely is bad for the eyes and bad for the soul. Who's that? It's just me. So, if not brain damage, not hysteria, what? I'm thinking about retraining. Retraining? As a surgeon. I know I've left it late, but I like to deal with just the flesh and the bone, cutting and sewing, this general practice, this holistic approach, you know, dealing with the complete person. Well, that means dealing with their minds, their personalities. It means looking at their humanity. You can only look at so much of that. I remember she had the most remarkable eyes. Their gaze never left me. Even while she was in a trance state, her, her eyes never fully closed. Never left me. But you're sure she was in a trance state? At the time, I was sure. But sometimes I have wondered. There are two things I wanted to ask you, Dr. Bolton. One is about the personality she displayed under hypnosis. Father Karras' personality isn't the word. She did sound older, more mature. But the notion Mrs. McNeil had of another personality having invaded her daughter, like some kind of medieval possession... I wasn't convinced of that for a moment. This, uh, this mature voice, did it claim to be someone else, someone inside Reagan? Of course, someone ancient as usual. But I don't believe in reincarnation. Do you? No. Only in resurrection. But maybe her performance has grown more skillful since I saw her. Maybe, and that's the other matter I wanted to raise with you. One of the most astonishing aspects of her behavior is her knowledge, her vocabulary, her linguistic skill. Her talk is full of literary quotes and biblical illusion. I do marvel at the human brain. It is conceivable that this miraculous... I use the word loosely, Father, not in your specialized sense. This miraculous organ is capable of retaining everything it encounters... All it sees and hears and reads and experiences. All of it may be held somewhere in what Keats called the wreathed trellis of a working brain. Cryptomnesia. Just so. And if all this can be retained, in certain circumstances, it may be recoverable. One circumstance being hypnotic trance. Is it not conceivable? But not desirable. I don't think I could allow you to put me into a trance in which I could relive my entire life. No, I wouldn't attempt it. I no longer practice hypnosis. Oh, I didn't know that. I am still a therapist, but talking cures only. I practice now in a very traditional way. The patient lies there on that couch, and I sit with my back to them and listen. That way I don't have to meet their eyes. I've developed an aversion to meeting people's eyes. <coughs> about an exorcism, Karis. Will it be in Latin, or are you one of these vulgar modernists? You prefer Latin? It is musical. Et nenas in ducas in tentationem, said, said. And ah, uh, and ah, uh, this is really, really weird. I'm all dried up. Said liber nos amalo. Thank you, Damien. Well done. Deliver us from evil. Any more? Looking for signs, are you? Quo vadis, modus operandi, Et tu, Brute? French? Soixante La plume de ma tante? German. Donna und Blitzen, Auschwitz, Belsen, Dachau. Cat? <coughs> Sau? <coughs> but we really shouldn't be bantering like this. I'm serious now. Not a word of a lie. An exorcism might be a fatal mistake. For you, I mean. Why? Because you're not priest enough. You're only kind of a doctor, and you're not man enough. A kind of a doctor? It would kill you. I will kill you. I swear by the rusty nails of the cross, I'll destroy you, Karis. 
So for me, of course, an exorcism is a dandy idea. Get some meat between my canines. Why the tape machine? An interview? <gasps> Excellent notion. You could make stars of both of us. Damien Karras, celebrity saint, and his lovely sidekick, Buxom Beelzebub. You know what this is? Do you? It's holy water. The Pope's piss. Put it away, Karras. Latin's all very well, but please, not that medieval hogwash. In the name of the Father, you do that. and of the Son, no, please. and of the Holy Ghost. No! Ah! Ah! <sighs> Who are you? No, Huan Ma Hia. No, Huan Ra Hiu. Inem Ra Hiu. What language are you speaking? Tell me who you are. Philip the microphone. Yes. Hold it close to her mouth. I'll try to keep her head straight. God Almighty, Tara! Mrs. McNeil, please do it. It's important. You're killing her! You will not die! Trust me! I sprinkled some water on her. Water? You sure it wasn't acid? I told her it was holy water. It was tap water. What's the difference? Holy water is blessed. Well, ain't it lucky? It doesn't help the case for possession. If the mere suggestion of holy water, what else might be mere suggestion? Suggestion? Hysteria. Insanity. The house is full of books. Is there anything here about possession, about the devil, something your daughter might have read? Oh, Ray didn't like books about ponies and girl detectives. But, but is, is there anything here? Well, there was one, but it was about witchcraft research. A movie that was being talked about, it fell through. Witchcraft? Maybe there was something in it about devil worship, uh, the devil? Maybe. Do you still have it? I haven't laid eyes on it for, I don't know how long. It does that. Have a look for the book. And listen, like I told you, one of the acceptable signs of possession, uh, acceptable to the church, I mean, is the ability to speak a language the victim can't possibly know. That gibberish she was spouting? It had the cadence of speech. I have a friend in the Institute of Language and Linguistics. I'll let him hear the tape. That's pretty. The bells of hell go ting-a-ling-a-ling. Have mercy upon me, O oh Lord. Consider my troubles which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that lifts me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. The heathen are sunk down in the pit they made, and the net which they made their own foot is taken. The wicked shall be turned into hell. At three laps I watched you run. I know you have. You're fighting fit. You box too, Father Karras. Well, I used to. I thought so. You have to look where you hold yourself. The little scar there. It's exactly like the one Brando had in On the Waterfront. Of course, Marlins was makeup. Made his eye droop a little. A melancholy look. People tell you you look like Brando. Did they tell you you look like Paul Newman? Never. But finally, at last, someone has noticed. Thank you, Father. But you're not Paul Newman, are you? No. Kinderman, William, Lieutenant. Detective. What can I do for you? You can talk to me a little. About what? Satanism. Well, of course. All right, if we walk, I don't want to cramp. 
Let us walk and talk together. The desecrations in the church are act. Obscenities, blasphemies, they were terrible. So I heard. I didn't see them. I did, Father. I was sickened. I was angry and sickened. Now, who might do a thing like that? I ask you, because you're not only a priest, you're a psychiatrist, too. Who could do such a thing? Someone sick and angry? Someone involved in Satanism? Devil worship? It's possible. Black Mass. Well, I suppose there were echoes of Black Mass in the desecrations. But even so, you're looking for somebody uh, deeply disturbed. Well, psychotic, even. And I think you think you're looking for a sick priest. One who's angry at the church. Is it possible? Well, of course it is. But who might know of such a one? Who better to know than a priest who's also a psychiatrist and... Also, again, a counselor to other priests. Sorry, Lieutenant, I can't help you. Because you don't know or because you won't tell? Well, there is the question of medical ethics, uh, not to mention the secrets of confession. Not to mention I could have you deported. Well, your power is greater than mine. I couldn't even excommunicate you. My guess is you're Jewish. So on, Father. Satanism... Psychotic behavior. Maybe ritual murder. What? Like the way Burke Dennings was killed. Dennings? He, uh, he died in a fall, uh, an accident. Is that what Mrs. McNeil told you? She's a lovely lady, is she not? Are you free of the risk of cramp now, father? Yes. Then may we sit down. Uh, Lieutenant Kinderman, Homicide Division. I should have said. Oh, my. Middle age. Backache, weariness of heart and lungs. What a life. You want to sit down? Mrs. McNeil, whom I met through a mutual friend, said Dennings was found at the bottom of those steps beside her house. He'd fallen all the way to M Street. Correct. Did you suspect he was killed? His injuries, Father, I have them here. And the eyesight, too. Middle age, who am I kidding? I'm old. Making Moses of the neck skin, shearing of potisma, sternomastoid, spleenus, trapezium, and other various muscles, fracture of the spine and shearing of the... Enough? The bottom line, Father. The terrible bottom line. Burke Dennings was found at the bottom of those steps. And his head had been turned completely around. It was facing backwards. I seek consolation more and more. I have none to offer, unless you convert. Movies, Father. I seek distraction there. More than that, comfort, delight. Would you maybe like to see a movie with me sometime? Well, free. I get passes. I have them for Thursday night. Flesh and the Devil. Maybe not the best choice. Who's in it? Unfortunately, not Garbo and Gilbert. It's the remake. Lucille Ball and Harbo Mark. I've seen it. Take this as best you can. You don't look like Brando. You look like Eric Bloor. You do not smile. Neither do you. Mrs. McNeil, whom you met through a mutual friend... That was a very formal way of speaking. Speak some more. But we told the lieutenant that Burke had been in the house that night. I know it was never a secret. And all our alibis worked out. Alibis? We don't need alibis, Sharon. He said the injuries were so severe, he couldn't see how even falling all the way down those steps could have caused them. He said it was impossible. Not impossible, but highly unlikely. Then what does he think did cause them? He said maybe if Dennings had fallen from a height first and then down the steps. What height? From the roof of this house or from a high window. But the only window... Reagan's window. Father, that window was closed and locked. The shutters too. They are always so. And Burke had no reason to go up there. Unless to jump out the window. 
Is that what Kinderman thinks? He thinks, or suspects, or his pathologist does, that Dennings was killed by a very strong man and then thrown down the steps. He talked about enemies, someone Dennings might have offended, abused. He was known to goad people when he was drunk, was he not? He was a torment to my husband. Well, that is not important. He, he was only a, a drunk Englishman. He called my husband Himmler, Goebbels, a Nazi. The things Reagan called you, Carl. We are Swiss, and you are not very strong. You are strong, but you are not very. Did anyone ask Reagan if Dennings had been in her room? She wouldn't remember. She was heavily sedated. This is true. I know because back then I was allowed to see the girl. Kinderman knows I've been coming here. I just thought I should tell you. He may be watching the place, having it watched. Father, forgive me if you'll excuse the expression, but you're not here to be Kinderman's deputy. You're here to help Reagan. Oh, it's hard, Damien. It's so hard. It's actually sore. Heart and lungs, gripe in the belly. But it's all just memory. How can memory make your stomach gripe? Like a cancer taking hold. Guilt, that's what it is. Guilt about what? Surviving. I came through it all. Here I still am. But I saw it all. What did you see? I heard it all. Schnell, you Jewish rat. Avanti, communist weasel. Ali V, gypsy scumbag, on the double shirt lifter, move your ass, nigger. They herded us into this place. I knew it. I knew it from when I was a kid. It used to be a gym. Boxing, you know. Jesus save us, the hoodlums are used to hang out there. But fighting was one way out of this. Or be a movie star, or a priest, maybe. But they didn't have punch bags and ropes anymore. The only thing left from the old days were the cockroaches. Survivors, like me. No pennants and gloves on the walls. Now they had meat hooks, and they had cattle prods, and they were laughing. How could they laugh, Dimmy? How could they douse a child in water and put a thousand bolts into her armpits and laugh while they were doing it? What did you call me? How could one human being do that to another? Why do they do it? Because they enjoy it? It looked like they did. It sounded like they did. Screaming and laughing all mixed up, and I heard it all, Dimmy. Don't. Call me that. There was this old woman. I used to see her selling clothes pegs and plastic flowers. Now here she was, down on her knees, praying and praying. With every bless me, there were bubbles of blood in her mouth. Don't stop this. No, I won't. Stop it now. No, too late. It's too late to stop. We'll go on until the death. We'll kill you all. The piglet and you and the other one. What other one? Your brother. I don't have a brother. Your brother will be in pain. You'll share his pain. You'll meet the devil in him, in the jaws of hell, which is where you all belong. All hands on deck! It's coming on the boat! Batten down the hatches! Look lively, lady! And do not feel our timbers a shiver! Put your back into it before we're sundered and sunk! I must be kept out! Captain said so. Two days, Joe. She lay there two days before they found her. You did all you could, Damien. Not enough. What else could you have done? I could have forced her out of that place. Made her come to Washington. Made her? Forced her? Your mother was the most stubborn woman on earth. She wouldn't even have a phone in the apartment. Apartment? Shithole. And she lay there two days. Here. Another. Actually, she was sitting in her usual chair with the radio on. Shivas Regal. How can you afford this stuff? I can't. I stole it. Father Dyer. Whiskey. It was in the bottom drawer of the college president's desk. I mean, what an example to set. Our president drinking? 
So I relieved him of a great temptation. I am the good thief. I think that might be blasphemy. Forgive me, Father. And forgive me saying this. You look terrible. My mother just died. Before that, you look terrible. Damien, what's happening in the McNeil house? You can't tell me? Try to tell me? I'll tell you this. When I got back from the funeral, I stood on the bridge out there and looked across the river. It was sunset. I used to do that a lot, stand there and watch the sunset. It was like communion for me. It was almost like bliss. For me, it's the isn't it a lovely day scene in Top Hat. There's no bliss anymore, Joe. It's just dying fire going down into dirty water. There's no communion for me anymore. Well, we could leave together. What do you mean? The priesthood. You, because of shaky faith. Me, for my own reasons. And what are they? Word has come down from the high echelons of the gay Politburo. Basic black is out. I reminded them of the subtle touch of a silver cross at the chest. But no, still frowned on. You are a man of sorrow. We're a sizable minority. <laughs> Don't you sometimes thank God and St. Ignatius for the vow of celibacy? I mean, dating must be a nightmare these days. Everyone, boys and girls alike, they're all so fashion conscious. Frowning fashion fascisty. Well, that's enough booze for me. You two. Here, lie back. Uh, Joe, this has to be said. I am a straight self. <laughs> I knew that the moment I met you. Now lie back and think of angels and ice cream. What are you doing? I'm taking off your shoes. Father Dyer, shoe thief. Please thank the president for me, uh, for the whiskey. I'll do that. By the way, the Potomac is actually quite a clean river. And the flame wasn't dying, it's just that the earth turns, you see, and the sun seems to... Well, I'll give you some books on the subject. The light will be back tomorrow, almost certainly. Astronomy and the church are no longer enemies. So rejoice in the Lord, for praise is comely. Praise the Lord, sing unto him. Sing unto him a new song, play skillful. For the word of the Lord is right, for the word of the Lord... Were the heavens made? Good evening, Mr. Engstrom. Lieutenant. Been to another movie? Uh, no, I have been on an errand for Mrs. McNeil. Shall I tell her you are here? It is very late. No need. It's you I came to see. About Burke Dennis. I did not know the man well. But he was abusive to you, was he not? Two different people have told me that. One was at a party here. She says his behavior towards you that night, her word was abominable. I am a patient man, Lieutenant. I know how to deal with abusive drugs. Uh, sure, so let's talk about another night. The night he was killed. I have told you all I can. Tell me this. At the Crest Theater, did you watch King Lear till the end? All 137 dreary minutes? I would not say dreary, Lieutenant. Perhaps uh, austere. And you watched it all. And then you caught a bus just outside the theater. You got off at Wisconsin Avenue, then walked here. Arriving at 9.30. I have told you all this. Mr. Engstrom, that night at the theater, there was a breakdown, a projection failure. The break lasted almost 20 minutes. If you watched till the end, the first bus you could have caught would not have reached Wisconsin Avenue until almost 10 o'clock. There's no way you could have been here by 9.30. Exactly 9.30, you glanced at your watch. That's what you told me. What do you have to tell me now? Mr. Engstrom, you have lied to me about your whereabouts on the night Dennings died. Where, in fact, were you? I was at the movies. Why were you fired from your employment with Dr. Halloran of Beverly Hills? I'm sure you know. Yes, I do. You were fired for stealing narcotics from his pharmacy. You've been doing that for months. At first ordinary pilfering and then forging prescriptions. But Dr. Halloran dropped all charges. And within a fortnight you were working for Mrs. McNeil. So the good doctor must have given you an excellent reference. 
Why did he do that? You must ask him. I did. He says he can't say unless you give him permission to speak. Or he's served with a subpoena to appear in the same court as you. Does he have your permission? Are you going to arrest me? Good night, Mr. Engstrom. Jimmy. Why? Why you do this, Jimmy? Why you do this to me? I'm here two days. Why make me sit here two days? And the radio plays bad music, filthy music. Who changed the station? There are rats, Jimmy. The rats are coming in. I hate rats. On the floor, the walls, there are cockroaches. I hate them even more. So many, many rustling and clicking. And Mrs. Corelli's cats, all 18 of them. Can you smell them? Can you hear them? Damien? Uh, uh. They're hungry. Listen. Hear them at the door. Scratching and hissing. And scratching to get in. Your friend doesn't look well. Not well at all. I know his mother died recently. That's right. And he took it badly, as a son should. Is the coffee as good as I promised, Father Dyer? It's good. Are you sure you won't try the cheesecake? It's the best in the city. No thanks, Lieutenant. Father Karras is too thin. He's haggard. Uh, That's a strong word. The shadows around the eyes, the, the low shoulders... Is this priest the beaten fighter, I wonder? You don't say much, Father. Well, you haven't asked the question except about coffee and cheesecake. Well, I'll tell you right out. I'm a man who likes talking to a man who likes to talk. Sidney Greenstreet in the Maltese Falcon. Excellent. You rise in my estimation. So is this to be a movie quiz? Father, there are worse ways to pass the time, believe me. I know. I'm a homicide detective. Maybe you have a question for me. Well, you seem to know a lot about Damien Karras' appearance. Have you been watching him? Having him watched? I have given no such order. Have you been watching the McNeil house? Which Father Karras visits often. What's happening in that house, Father Dyer? I don't know. Why don't you ask Damien? Please, Father. Do not think I'm coaxing you to say anything behind your friend's back. I know you'll tell him everything I ask. Everything you say. I know you know. You want me to tell him. And you've nothing to say about why he might be visiting there. I can tell you something about Damien Karras. Soon after I was ordained, I went through what you call a crisis of faith. I reacted by becoming... Becoming what, Father? A comedian. I was Groucho Marx. I was W.C. Fields. Sometimes, Lieutenant, I was Jerry Lewis. May your God forgive me. (laughs) I talked smart and I talked irreverent and always, always I talked fast. I gibbered. I frolicked. And Damien took it all. Sometimes he laughed, sometimes he smiled. Sometimes he told me to shut the hell up, but he took it for months. He saved your faith. He saved my sanity, my life. What I'm saying is, Damien... Oh, I know what you're saying. Whatever he's doing in that house, which you insist you don't know, you also insist he's trying to do good. But here's the thing, Father... You're sure Father Karras is there to do good? What if he's making a colossal mistake? Do something, Karras. Don't just sit there. You can't make up your Romish but rational mind. 
You just cannot reach a resolution, can you, old boy? Your conscience is a coward. All resolution sickled over with pale thought. Pale thought, that's... Of course, it's not just resolution you lack, is it, my Jesuit juggler? Not to worry, you're far from alone. You know why there are so many religious fanatics, Damien? I shall tell you, because there's so little faith. Uh, Who are you? Who am I? I'm sure we haven't met before. You really feel that? Well, beg to differ. I'm utterly sick of looking at you. Sicklid over with pale thought. That's uh, that's from Hamlet. Almost. I don't think I got it quite exact. It's been so long. I've been too long in exile, and I'm so damn tired. Jaded might be the word. Will you tell me your name? The fact is, old chap, I may have squeezed out some ghastly Hollywood done in my time, but I used to be steeped in the old classics, steeped from scrotum to the old grey matter, Shakespeare, Dickens, P.G. Woodhouse. And you don't know my name. Well, well I'm, I'm not sure. But I'll read you if I was some big titted starlet, you'd know my name. Are you Burke Dennings? I'm reminded of dear old John Gilbert. Someone came up to him in a bar one day and said, Didn't you used to be John Gilbert? You're English. You're a movie director. Please, just for me. Safe film, not bloody movie. Where are you going? Mrs. McNeil? Yes? Could you come up here, please? Just a moment. You're not bringing up the sow, are you? You'll only agitate the piglet. Burke Dennings is dead. Oh, break it to me gently, why don't you? Well, if you must have her, then have her, we must. Let's give her a nice welcome. A song, yes. What do you think she might like? What about this golden oldie? All things bright and beautiful. What is it for? Is she changing again? This is McNeil. Her voice. All things wild and wonderful. An English accent. She claims to be male, a movie director. Does she sound anything like Bert Dennings? I'll send you snapped and twisted and you left back again. All things bright and You are not Regan. All beautiful and Stop this one. I think you should go downstairs again. All bright and slick with you go back to hell where you belong. You're not my daughter. Mrs. McNeil. You crawl into your pit and you evil bitch. If no one else can finish you, I will. Mrs. McNeil. Someone has to do it. Someone has to throw this thing to hell. Get rid of it. Father, 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 I did enjoy that. You can still have wicked fun when you're dead, Father, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. How did you die? In your vocation, do you find yourself asking many ridiculous questions like that? That's it. Sit down. Put your feet up like me and we'll dream up your next move. Merely what you need is outside help. You're really all alone in this, aren't you, Jimmy? Because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. One does love a bit of the old King James. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Is that a language? Does have the cadence of language? You don't know. Aramaic, perhaps, which Jesus spoke. Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? At last, room service. Come in. Beliefs. Are we to be evicted? Exorcised? Hello? Is anyone here? 
Dus is nog nieuw. Die rem is nog nieuw. Dus is nog nieuw. Dus weer, Sharon, Billy. Waar is everyone? Is there anyone here? Oh, devil moon! Billy! Carl! Hello? Hello, this is the McNeil house. Who is that? Where the hell is everyone? In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer as I have overcome the world. Amen. <laughs> Oh, you're really all alone in this, aren't you, Demi? Hello. Sharon. Mrs. McNeil. Is there no one here? Is there someone in there? Hello? Hello, Father. What are you doing down here? I've been trying to find my father. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean you. My real one, Dad. Why are you looking at me like that? Is there something... You should be in bed. I have to see myself. Oh my gosh, I'm so thin. My hair is a mess. How did I get to be so thin? You haven't been well, not eating properly. I look... Am I going to die? No. You're going to help me? Yes. Reagan, how did you get down here? How did you get out of the straps? I'm sorry, Father. The devil made me do it. I'm sorry, Father. I did not mean to wake you. Lily? Uh, where is everyone? Sharon is upstairs with the girl. Mrs. McNeil has gone to bed. Carl is in the kitchen. Even when he dropped the pan, he did not wake. You just walked on. I have been watching you. You mean I was... But I never walk in my sleep. Maybe never before. I, I know it is wrong to wake someone sleepwalking. Elvira, my daughter, she used to do it. Strangest thing. In her sleep she had no limp. She walked straight. It was like a strange, strange miracle. Father Karras. Oh. I'm sorry, Father. I didn't want to wake you, but you really should see this. Oh, uh, what is it? Reagan, I was changing her. Look at this, here, on her tummy. See? She couldn't have done that herself. The straps are secure. And it doesn't look like scratches anyway. No. Help me. It says help me. Yes. Can you help her father? Thanks, Sharon. You sure you want it black? I'm sure. More milk would be better. You need sleep. Oh, I need coffee. It does happen, you know, uh, the writing on the skin. There have been mystics who've been able to make it happen. In a trance, their unconscious mind somehow controls the differential flow of blood to the skin, raising it up. It's not supernatural. <laughs> Reagan McNeil, the 12-year-old mystic... Who can also make picture frames fall off the wall and drawers open and shut all without getting out of bed. <laughs> Why don't you go to bed, Sharon? Oh, I need more than sleep, Father. What? I need to get out of here. What do you mean for good? Leave Mrs. McNeil? Chris will still have Carl and Philly. And she'll have you. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can take any more. My boyfriend and I have talked about getting married. You want to leave to get married? No, it's not like that. I mean, we haven't set a date or anything. But, oh, this is going to sound crazy. It's the smells. Reagan smells? It's always diarrhea, you know? When she's sick, and she is a lot, it's putrid. So is her breath. And she's constantly breaking wind. Her smell fills the room. It's like death. And I feel if I don't get away, I'll never get rid of it. It'll be on my clothes, on my hair, and on my skin, on my own breath. 
husband will never get married. I'll be scared that when I'm with my husband, he'll smell her on me. I am so bored. Why can I not have some lively visitors? I'm not well, I need cheering up. All I have is you sitting there in a salt. You never even bring grapes. I thought you had a lot of company. It speaks. You told me you were legion. You even have the real Reagan in there somewhere. You call that skinny piglet company? Oh, she wasn't bad at first. Juicy enough. But now she's a frazzle. Skin and bone and gutted of all sense of humor. I had a dream about Reagan. I know you did. What did I dream? Karis, things are tedious enough without discussing your dreams. I mean, how juvenile. But you said you knew I dreamed about her. How do you know? Because I know everything. Because you're the devil. That's a blasphemous thing to say. Wash your mouth out. One of the first things you said to me was, I am the devil. Well, if I did, and I don't admit it, you might well be trying to trick me. But if I did, Satan forgive me. Sometimes I don't know what I'm saying. I really haven't been well. Let me talk to Reagan, the real Reagan. You speak sometimes in something like her voice, but that's not her, is it? Oh, I know. Me and my voices. What am I to do? I can't help you. If you let me talk to her, it might help all of us. You once warned me against exorcism, but I think that's what you want. The challenge. Yes! Oh, yes, please. You and your brother, make a decent tussle out of it. I told you before, I don't have a brother. Oh, ye of little faith. Reagan might convince me an exorcism is worth attempting. I don't know why you people want her back anyway. In some of your human cultures, if they got her back in the state she's in now, they'd kill her. Family honor. Not that there's been much of that in this family. Oh, you look so crestfallen, diddums, dimmy. So hungry. Are you sure? Oh, I'm sure. Really? Really? Please. On the Psychology and Pathology of Occult Phenomena by C.G. Jung. On Simulated Insanity by the same author. I'm really busy here, Joe. I can see that. This is quite a collection. The Satanic Mass by H.T.F. Rhodes. Witchcraft and Demonology by R.H. Robbins. Saints preserve us. You've even got Aleister Crowley. Don't you need a dispensation to read him? Joe, what do you want? Well, I really fancy a lemon drop. Got any? No. But you do have James's Varieties of Religious Experience and The Devils of Ludun by Huxley. Joe! Or at least you have the complete Roman ritual. That could come in handy. Listen, forget the lemon drops. You know what I really need? A drink. And so do you. Let's go out. I have to finish this. Finish what? A dissertation. Demonology. Satanism. Simulated insanity. Is it a dissertation on possession? Joe! Sorry Is to be this blunt. about Chris McNeil, about her daughter? It's about something really important. Get out of here, Joe. Now, please. You need help. What? I need to see a shrink, do I? Damien, Have I... you forgotten I am a shrink? This is more important than you can imagine, and there's a life at stake. Now, get out of here! Damien, calm down. I don't mean you need psychiatric... Well, thank you, old buddy. I mean the church. I mean guidance. At least speak to the college president. I think you'll find we don't do this crap anymore. Is that a disapproving look? No. Good. Because Uncle Jack Daniels and Mr. Marlborough are as close as I get to Holy Communion. We have to talk about Reagan's symptoms. <laughs> symptoms? You call all hell breaking loose a symptom? You have to understand, for a case of possession to be considered genuine, the church demands the very strict criteria on that. If they're not, no exorcism is permitted. But what else can all this mayhem be? 
She makes doors bang open and shut. She topples furniture in another room. It's called psychokinesis. It happens mostly around disturbed adolescents. You may know it as poltergeist activity. Oh, I know it well. And what about the way she talks, the, the words she uses, the things she knows? No 12-year-old could know all that. That is baffling, astonishing. But it's not supernatural. It happens. In Reagan, it's as extreme as any I've read about, yes. But the phenomenon does exist in the brain, in nature. The writing on the skin... That's to do with manipulation of blood flow. Again, a natural phenomenon. <laughs> Where? In Transylvania? Have you called her father? Oh, he's in Europe. The bastard didn't even call her on her last birthday. You're here to drive a devil out, not invite another one Mrs. in. Mrs. McNeil, the kind of behavior Reagan's been displaying, I said it's often found in disturbed adolescents. The children are often in disturbed family situations. Not that bullshit again! They feel rage, guilt, confusion. Jesus Christ Almighty! Guilt? You think she feels guilty about her father and me? She's guilty because she killed Burke Dennings! Come in. I am sorry, Mrs. McNeil. It's all right, Billy. I, I got a bit upset. It happens all the time. Carl and I, there is something we must say. Oh, let me guess. You both want to follow Sharon out of this madhouse. We stay until you ask us to leave, madam. It is my husband, really, who has something to tell you. Carl? Go ahead, Carl. We have no secrets from Father Karras. Carl, you're a quiet man, but I've, I've never seen you lost for words before. It is the policeman. He says we must tell you. Kinderman? Uh, yes, Kinderman. He was in his car, stopped in the street. He sat in the front, Carl sat in the back. Carl? The street where the car was. What about it? Uh, Mortimer Street. It is where our daughter lives. And Vera is not dead. Carl was taking money to her. I did not know. He thought he was saving me. He's a great fool. He has been trying to save me for years. Every time I go there, I see cockroaches on the stairs. Twice I've seen a rat. When she opens the door, she... She never un... Does the, 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 the safety chain and sit down, Carl. When she reaches out for the money, I see the scabs and punctures on her arm. If I mention her mother or her clinic, she slams the door. That is where I was the night Mr. Dennings died. Not at the movies. Kinderman says Elvira must go to a clinic. If she does not, the law will take her somewhere else. Maybe I have said too much now. I, I apologize. Oh. I confess I, I took a glass of brandy from the bottle in the kitchen. Oh. I, I will say no more. <clears throat> May we go, madam? Of course. Um, good luck, both of you. And thank you for staying with me. Have another brandy, Carl. Feel I clean up the broken glass? No, oh, that's all right. I'll get it. Good God. Well, that's us told. Kinderman won't let go. I know Mortimer Street. It's a war zone. It hasn't seen a taxi cab in ten years. What's this? It's the book <clears throat> I told you about. Witchcraft. Oh, you found it. Well, it looks pretty basic stuff. I doubt if Reagan could have gleaned much from this. I found it under her bed. Look at the edges of the pages. See, a, a strip torn off every second page or so has a strip torn off the edge. And? Burke did that all the time. The scripts, newspapers, books, he'd roll the strips up and, and chew them. He was in her room. I told Kinderman he wasn't, or I said I, 
He'd had no reason to be there, but he was. Mrs. McNeil, the way Dennings was killed. Abnormal strength, a sign of possession. And she told me she did it in his own voice. She tells lies, and that sounds like a lie to me. I hope you're right. Because I'm terrified she'll kill someone else. Come on now. Even if you are right, even if it was a lie, much more of this and they'll put her away. Since all this started, that's what I fought against. I told them over and over, you will not put my daughter away. If her father was here, she'd have been in a padded cell months ago. So what now? Well, you can introduce me to Uncle Jack, a large one. And there are still the tapes, the, um, the Language Institute. This is some mighty weird shit, Damien. I know. You want to tell me what you're up to? No, not yet, Frank. Your Jesuit lips are sealed. All right. You gave me two tapes. This one. The man lifted me up and put me in the saddle. I was so high. It was so amazing and high. It was like I was flying. Can I have a horse, Dad? And this. You told me both voices came out of the same mouth, right? Right. Six months apart. Well, I would say these could be different personalities. Could be? It's possible. I wouldn't swear to it in court. You look disappointed. Then you asked me if the second voice was speaking anything like a real language. That I could demonstrate in court. It's speaking English. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Listen again. Now, listen to it backward. Backward? Every sentence... Every word and phrase is backward. Listen. How will you him? Bless you. The blood is warm and it sings. No more cold. No more nothing. Stay and play. Play with the blood. Play with the flesh. Play with the piglet and the priest and the sow and all of them. Follow. blood living and singing and warm and they let us be warm and live and sing laugh and play with them all they are nothing and we are many you are convinced it is a genuine case it does seem to meet many of the conditions set out in the ritual all right i'll speak to the bishop Show me your report. Thank you, Father President. If this does go ahead, we have to find an exorcist. Well, I know the background, Father. I've met the girl many times. No, Damien, we need someone experienced. I believe Marin is around. Lancaster Marin? You know him. I've never met him, but... Maybe we are more the sons of Earth than we are children of Heaven. Maybe we are mere human beings who can only glimpse the spirit. But might we not instead be spiritual beings who undergo the experience of being human? From God and evolution. I never did finish that book. Too much science for me. He's getting on in years. And I'm not sure about his health, but he must be all right. He's just back from Iraq, digging up tombs in that heat. And he does have experience. I didn't know that. It would be an honor to meet him. Well, as you say, you you do know the background, and there should be a psychiatrist present. You could assist Father Marin. But you should know this. The last exorcism he carried out was in Africa, 15 years ago. It lasted weeks. It almost killed him. like a little brandy in your coffee, Father? Oh, I should not. The doctors say I should not, but uh, thank God my will is weak. <laughs> mm. Excellent. Thank you. 
You have everything we need, Damien? A uh, cassock and a purple stone for you, uh, two surplices and holy water. And the ritual? Two copies. Good. Please remember, Damien, to avoid conversation with the demon. It is a liar, and it will mix truth with lies to confuse and divide us. Conversation is very dangerous. The demon... You say it so. Matter of fact. Mm. It is a matter of fact, Mrs. McNeil. It is what we are facing. Should I give you some of the history, Father? History? Well, the uh, the personalities Reagan has shown. Um, I've encountered three. There is only one. And I want to see its face, Father Karras. When you walk in and say, here's my big brother, he'll fix you. My big brother? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't mind if Damien does not. Mrs. McNeil, I really don't think you should go in there with us. Father Merritt. I'm sure Father Karras knows best. Does your daughter have a middle name? Teresa. How lovely that is. Reagan Teresa McNeil. And just where the hell have you been? Our Father who art in heaven. Answer me. Thy kingdom come. Answer. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. I know. And forgive us the trespasses. I know where As you've we been. forgive those who trespass against us. One of your retreats, uh, hiding out, attention. head low and lead ass on velvet cushions. Pen in one and hand and Hershey Bar in the other. You enemy of the doodling faith, another humbugging book. Human race, Always as easy as death, doodling to you. That's why you do it. And, vice, and because they pay you. Discord, give you medals and badges and lavish and dinners. Sorrow, and first class and travel to another award. And another lavish dinner and more money. And Always the fucking the folding spirit. stuff. And Big your God. lazy ass Big on God. cushions. Big you God. make me God. sick. Deliver the stuff just Lord comes dribbling out of you like loose shit. From your rock, book after book of stinking dead. dribble. Of what about this from your shitty work in progress? In living, evolving matter, the miracle of the human brain shines and grows until it reaches incandescence. How long did it take you to get that one down? As long as it took me to quote the manure? You're a fake, Marin, and a lazy fake. I may be the author of pain and sorrow, but I'm the real thing, and I put in real Oh, work. Damien, Damien, the holy water. Be gone. In the name of the Father. I'm still trying that old trick. In the trick. name of the Son. Be gone. The papist In the name piss. of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Might as well climb up on the bed, lift up your party God. frock, and piss Be on me yourself. Hopeless. <laughs> God the Son commands you. God the Holy Spirit commands you. You're past you. it, and you're losing. Lord, heed my prayer. Let me push over. Pansy, push over. May your soul be with you. This time you lose. God, look down in pity on your servant, Reagan, to me, and kneel now in the world of the unclean spirit who befuddles and stupefies the human mind. It is the terror and panic. Repel, O oh Lord, the devil's power. Break and hunger his hands and flesh. Graciously grant, O oh Lord, that the evil spirit who has terrorized us may itself retreat in and So that this servant of yours, Reagan Teresa McNeil, may sincerely and steadfastly resent the service which is your due through Christ our Lord. By the sign of your name, let your servant Reagan Teresa McNeil be protected in body and spirit. In the name of the Father. Get your stinking fingers off me, son! Don't touch me! You won't scribble the sign of your damn God on me! Give you a fortified tower. Damien. A fortified tower. Respond, Damien. Damien, the response in the face of the enemy. God's symbol. The enemy had no power. The instrument of torture. The son of iniquity. Damien. Lord, send Don't envy that creature. Saintliness, faith, pro style and medals and money. He's a fake. Steeped in sloth and avarice. Be with you. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh. It's still right, Damien. Finish your cigarette. Then we can go back in. Father, those words she quoted, were they, uh, were they really from your notebook? An unpublished book? I wasn't paying attention. Even if they were, it wouldn't matter. But what does matter? The fact that the front legs of the bed were rising up and thumping down on the floor. The chest of drawers moving by itself. Damien, there may come a time when you and I can discuss what we see and hear in there. But not yet. It's all lies and misdirection and illusion, and we have only our faith to defend us against these things. The Holy Resurrection. By your wondrous Do you still dream about Vienna, Marin? Those days of your youth you spent to the tune of Haydn and Mozart? The Opera House? Plush box and men's lavatory both. You gave and you took in both. Giving and taking with both hands, your mouth and your blessed behind. Oh, you tried, I know you tried, to give yourself to the Lord. But often as not, you'd give to some blonde, blooming boy instead. From your knees on the floor of the cathedral to kneeling in a reeking cubicle on the railway station. My, oh my. How lost you were in those Vienna woods. Damien, if you'll excuse me a little while. Uh, of course, Father. Don't run away yet. There's work to be done here. This is just our first week, and I want this show to run and run. Loser! So, little Damien, alone at last. I adjure you not by my weakness but by the might of the Holy Spirit to depart from the servant of God. Want me to do the bed trick again? Do not think of despising this command because you know me to be a great sinner. Damn good, eh? It is God himself who commands you. And the bed didn't even move that time. I'm tempted to up the ante here by having Marin come back in and find you lying spread eagled there with blood in your eyes and your mouth. Depart, seducer, full of lies and cunning. I could do that, you know. Depart, abominable creature. You haven't slept for days, have Give you? way, monster. Give way to Christ. He will strip you of if you drank it all, it was alcohol. Kingdom, he will cast you forth into outer darkness. Are you hungry? The Father commands you. You were a hungry boy, the right? The Son commands Proper you. Proper little glutton you the were. The Holy Spirit Remember the mashed you potatoes? Get... Your mother had spent her last dime on those potatoes. With melted butter and black pepper mixed through. And you ate the lot. All that was left for her was a bit of hard cheese. How you despised the old girl. I love my mother. That why you left her to rot in a rat infested hovel? You know nothing. I know too much. You're ignorant. It's all bluff and double bluff and lies. Amen. Go downstairs. I'm sorry, Father. Mm. Go outside and get some air. I understand, Damien. Love and hate, all twisted together like knotted guts. <laughs> Good evening, Father. Lieutenant. That's a beautiful sunset. I used to stand here a lot watching it. It was a kind of communion. A kind of bliss. Well, far be it for me to interrupt a man's bliss. Don't no worry. All gone. I wanted to ask your advice. About a case. Hypothetical only. It's about a house. A hypothetical house. Right, and a, a hypothetical crime. Let's say there were five people in this house, and it's possible, only possible, that one of them was involved in this crime. Then four of those people are excluded from suspicion. That leaves one. But that one is a 12-year-old girl. This girl, and no other explanation, is at the heart of the mystery. She's a mystery herself. No one ever sees her. Then a priest starts to visit the house. Then another man turns up. He's not only a priest, he's a writer, a scientist. He's famous everywhere. The mystery deepens. You know what I'd like to do with this case? I'd like to put it in the hands of a higher authority. Maybe it's there already. If I could only be sure, I'd leave it there. I'll think about it a couple more days. Then I may need a warrant to see this mysterious girl. The hypothetical girl. A couple more days, Father. 
Then we'll talk again. Vultures! <laughs> bastards! Black carrion bastards! Get out of our own father! My lord is a fortified tower in the face of the enemy! Enemy? I'm your fucking nemesis, Marin. You're losing, and you can stick that needle in your eye, Dr. Bogart! Just try to hold her still! <laughs> still? Like this? I can do that. I can do still. Who are you? Why are you in my room? Deliver us from evil. Oh, don't. Oh, please. Please. Help. Help me. Please, Reagan, just lie still. Let me go. We're trying to help you. You're trying to kill me. Poison me. Father, can you hold her for a moment? Don't. I need to get a squad. Who are you? What's going on? McNeil, I need to give her an injection. Would he give me a swab? Mother, who are these people? Where are they coming from? Yeah. Right, now quickly now, you swab. Oh. It's good. It's good. It's so freaking big. This is McNeil. Do you think you could stop that music? I'm sorry, Mother. I know that's your record. I know it shouldn't be in my room, and I'm, I'm sorry about the mess in here. I didn't do it. Honest, I didn't. It's right. I, I had to give equilibrium the way she was struggling. May I wipe her face? Of course. Her uh, heart, I had to calm her down. Mother, who are these men? They're, tr they're trying to help you, Reagan. This one said that before, in the sitting room. He said he wouldn't let me die. In the sitting room? I'm so thin. I saw myself in the mirror down there, and I looked like a ghost. That was a dream. Well, I was wide awake. No, it was my dream. I dreamed I met her. It didn't happen. Yes, it did. I was there. He's lying. This is McNeil. She's quieter now. May we go outside? Oh, don't go. Don't leave me here with them. I'm never far away, babe. I promise. Mrs. McNeil, the drug could not work so far. What do you mean? She chose to calm down. It chose to do so. It? The, the demon? Yes, that was not your daughter speaking. I have known this demon before. It's very strong, very clever. I pray to Christ that you're right, Father. Yes, do that. I'll go downstairs now. Yeah. This time, I couldn't tell. Before I knew it wasn't her, I just knew. But now, I'm not sure. We will proceed. Very gently. We'll call you the moment we need you again. Please, be sure. Be gentle. I promise. Father, we don't know how quickly the drug would work. She's so weak. She feels strong, the way she was struggling. But a heart... Yeah, I understand, baby, and I know you still have doubts. Every symptom she displays may have a rational explanation, I understand. I'm a man of science myself, but so many symptoms and so extreme. So many and so extreme that you yourself asked the church to authorize an exorcism. I asked if the church was convinced of the need for one. And you will continue it with me. Is this the same demon you faced 15 years ago? In Africa, a boy in a Nigerian village, he'd been very weak with fever, and then, yes, it's the same. A village in Nigeria, a 12-year-old girl in Georgetown. Why? What's the purpose of it? I think sometimes that the one who is possessed is not the real target. We are the observers. The aim is to convince us that we are vile creatures, unworthy of the love of God. To make us despair of our own humanity. To convince us we're not spiritual beings who undergo the experience of being human. <laughs> it is disconcerting to hear one's early work quoted, but thank you, Damien. Now, will you summon up all the faith you have and go back in there with me? terrible and my voice is weird but that's because I've been ill and she didn't know me I mean she called me Reagan she even called me babe but I don't think she was for real maybe I'm, I'm going mad could I be ill in that way 
Are you a real doctor? How is she? Uh, the pulse is fast and it's feeble. <laughs> the stethoscope looks funny with those clothes. Rest. She really needs to sleep. There's no way I could sleep. Can you give her anything? No, no, it might. I may already have. Uh, maybe we should talk outside. No, Damien, that is not necessary. I can hear you outside anyway. If I give her anything else, she might go into a coma. Not every word, but I know what he thinks. He thinks this is all about him. What happens to me doesn't matter. He's the real target. Her blood pressure. It's because he's proud. It's one of these men who glide around like they're saints. But they're just men. They just know how to dress the part. The movie business is full of them. The church, too? Damien. Sorry. If she doesn't get rest, she might suffer cardiac exhaustion. Are you proud? Dr. Damien, is it? Father, she's in real danger. Well, then I should be in hospital. And you'll have to tell the real doctors about all the drugs you've given me. Are you proud of that? Is your mother proud of you? My mother? Damien. Or did she just say why the fancy dress and what's with the stethoscope? Let us begin again, Damien. <laughs> Father. Is the danger immediate? Well, uh, no. Then please, let us proceed quietly. You can check her again in a few minutes. I'll still be wide awake with all that druggy stuff inside me. Lord, heed my prayer. Uh, mutter all you like, I won't sleep. Damien, please respond. The whole house Lord, heed my prayer. Let my cry be heard by you. The Lord be with you. Uh, may he also be with you. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. I'll stay up all night and all day and all the next night. I've done it before. We cannot allow that, Father. Father? I can be a real nightbird when I want to be. Father, are you all right? Damien, could you do something for me? My overcoat downstairs somewhere. In the left-hand pocket, there's a tin of pills. More drugs. Please fetch them for me. Sure. Father Marin's coat, where is it? Oh, in the closet, in the hall, maybe. Okay. Oh, no, wait, here on the chair. Is this it? How is the girl, Father Karras? They are aspirin. They will help? Nitroglycerin. His heart. Here to go, my love. God, look down in pity on your servant. He went down on his knees. I thought he was going to say a prayer, then he just fell over. As in Adam all die, in Christ all shall be made alive. Is he dead? Yes. He's really dead. On my bedroom floor. I'm sorry, was he your friend? I only met him a few days ago. But he was a very great man, a scientist, a wonderful writer, a faithful priest. He wrote once, we are spiritual beings, we undergo being human. Sorry, I'm sitting on your bed. That's all right. Thank you. I'll just sit for a minute. Fine. Then I suppose you should send for... Who do you send for? The funeral people? An ambulance first, and the church. And my mother? Of course. Reagan? Uh-huh. How do you feel? I'm not sure. Uh, weird. Kind of... Muddled up. Me too. Like after the flu. A really bad flu. Would it be all right if I examine you? I check your heart and so on? Would you rather I called your mother first? No, that's okay. Get it over, then call her. Definitely, right away. Uh, so, just breathe normally. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. Let me look in your eyes. Open them wide. Excellent. That's, uh, that's clear and bright. Am I being very ill? And very brave. Was there a bird in the room? A bird? No, I don't think so. Hmm. A lizard? Maybe? Uh, it's all muddled. Like a dream. I do remember my hair needs to be washed and fixed, but I don't remember being brave. I know Dad always said I should try to be. He's in Italy. He's going to bring me back a horse. I'm going to call it brave. I think you're a sleepy girl. Do you know what Carl said to me once? He said, the two 
two best things in the world are courage and compassion. Carl's a wise man. They're the best of our saving graces. This is really weird. What is it? We're chatting and there is a dead man on the floor. Right. Well, um, I'll fetch your mother. I'll just go to the door and call her. I won't go out of the room. Father Marin had courage. It's funny. I keep thinking I've seen him before somewhere. Well, he was quite famous. Maybe you saw his picture in a magazine. Or even on television. No, it's somewhere else. Somewhere, uh, hot. He was praying then as well. And there was a boy. A naked boy. A black boy. Reagan. His skin was so black it had a kind of blue shine. It glistened. It gleamed like a plum. No. Africa. Please. And now the black boy's dead in Africa and the priest is dead on my floor. Really, really weird. You should kneel down now. Why? You know why. No more. Please. Just one more story. It's about my mother. It was at this party and she was talking to a priest. Actually, it was your friend, Joe Dyer. And she's drunk and she's waving her glass and her cigarette about it. And she says... Look at all the evil in the world. There has to be a devil. She's talking like this to a priest who went to all the good schools. Poor Joe. I don't know if he thought she was funny or embarrassing. Both, I suppose. Just a drunk actress. But I knew better than that, and I'm only 12, and I've missed a lot of school. I was embarrassed because she's an idiot. If the devil is real, she says, then there must be a real God. That's why there's so much good in the world. (laughs) But you're not an idiot, are you, Damien? You know better, too. I'm real, you're real, and that's it. Are you shaking? You are, you're shaking. Guy, you really should kneel down. I think you're a sleepy boy, Timmy. Come on. Kneel down. (gasps) You hit me! Don't! You bastard! My hair! Don't pull my hair! You bitch, you son of a bitch! Where the hell you are? Then what happens if I break your no, neck right no, now? No, what happens, you no. bitch? I want my mother! Liar! No, no, no please, please, please. And what happens if I strangle you? Where do you go then? Where do you run and hide? You gutless loser! Loser! Liar! Liar! Coward! Sick village boy! An old man! And a 12 year old girl! That's the best you can do. That's all you can handle. Well, how about me, huh? Something bigger. Something stronger. Come on. Come into me. Come on if you can. You. Stephanie. Gutless Lewis. You come into me. Yes, Damien, yes, at last. The wreathed trellis of a working brain. And how your blood is warm and singing. Now, stand still. Look there. See her? See the piglet? Look at her, Damien. Stand still and look. What does she think she sees? Glorious wings unfold, a reptilian smile? Kill her. You want, you need, you must. Ah, the mighty thud of a strong man's heart... Get those strong thumbs of yours in the corners of her mouth and rip her face apart. You've wanted to do that to someone since you were nine. Do it now. Rid us of the husk of her. Stand still and listen. You want, you need, you must. And we won't stop there. You and I will make this house the most famous bloody shambles in America. Begin with the piglet. Kill her, Damien. 
Damien. No. No, Damien. Do not. Damien! How is the girl? She seems all right. Weak, withdrawn. She says she remembers nothing. That's good. That's a mercy. I wanted to say goodbye to Mrs. McMill, but I, I just missed her. Yes, back to L.A. So what now, Lieutenant? Me? I'm off the case. The high offices of your church and the high offices of my department will decide between them what happened. About Denning's murder, my guess is they'll decide it wasn't the murder after all. And Damien? My guess on that. His doubts about his faith, his guilt about his mother. The girl almost died under his care, but he'd hardly slept or eaten for days. Now Marin was dead. Despair and guilt. Suicide. There's no doubt Father Karras went through the window. Down there. They found him down there. Only a yard or two from where Dennings ended up. Uncanny. Yes. I got to him before the ambulance arrived. I didn't know that. You were dead by chance. He was still alive. He couldn't speak, but he opened his eyes. And it wasn't guilt or despair I saw in them. It was something like... joy. Triumph. I know how dear a friend he was to you. I loved him. Shalom alaykum, Father Dyer. Peace be with you, Lieutenant. Father, you like movies. Well, I get passes. In fact, I have two for the crest tomorrow night. Would you like to go with me? They're showing Casablanca, which, as we all know, is perfection. Well, Bergman and Bogart are great, but I can't help thinking they should have stuck with the original cast. Azilsa and Sheridan, and in the part of Rick... Ronald Reagan. Excellent. You rise in my estimation. Father, give me the last line. You don't have to do the Bogart voice, but do the line. <sighs> Lieutenant, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. The Exorcist by William P. Blatty was dramatized by Robert Forrest. Harris was played by Robert Glenister. The Demon by Alexandra Mathie. Reagan by Lydia Wilson. Chris by Teresa Gallagher. Marin by Ian McDermott. Kinderman by Carl Johnson. Dyer by Brian Dick. Carl by Gerard McDermott. Villy by Christine Absalom. The President by Paul Stonehouse. Frank by Ben Onwukwe. And Sharon by Hannah Wood. Music and sound design is by Gary C. Newman. The Exorcist is a BBC Scotland production, directed by Gaynor McFarlane.